It almost always is if I order by operation. So I'm going to switch over to here, switch to the machine, which hopefully is on. Yes. Okay, you ready? Here's what we're going to do. What's the first button I'm going to push? Oh, is it the parentheses? That's Has to be! Damn it. You got, damn it! You got to put parentheses first because the TI does not understand that's what you're putting in. You can't put it in looking like that in your TI. You can't. You have to put it in on a, what's called a single line display. And this sounds like annoying, but this is how Excel spreadsheets work. You have to put everything in on a single line display. So you've got to group that parentheses up there. With the, you got to group that top of the parentheses. Then you go 90 times 2, no, times 2, plus 35 times 3, plus 30 times 4, plus 9 times 5, five plus 11 times 6, plus 5 times, that's okay, we'll get it here in a second. That's a, well, that, that's why we're doing it together. Plus 0, plus 1 times 10, plus 1 times 12, which is a little ridiculous, but 12, right? That's little, yeah, that's Close it all, that's fine, you can put, you can put 12. And then divide that by 184, yes? Yeah, yeah, but what did you, what was your total? For there we go. 3.2. Oh, I was right. Thank God. Well, now, now, time out. Time out, time out, time out, time out, time out, time out, time out. Time out. The big idea of this whole point is not tricking you guys into screwing up this part. It's understanding why that calculation works. If you give me 10 more minutes, maybe more, maybe 15, there is a built-in in your TIs and also in Excel where you can simply put in, let me show you, you can simply put in this, which is called a distribution. That's the distribution of the data. You can put that into your TI, press a couple buttons, and it'll give you the average automatic. Just, just so you know, I don't want to get you guys, this, it drives me insane because then we, we go through the frustration of like, I can't get that number. I know you can, it's just a technological, it's a technological thing. Of course, and it, that's, you shouldn't be penalized for missing a number if you understand the idea of what's going on. And that's why there are shortcuts that are very, very helpful. It's just I like doing them manually first to kind of get to you understand what the black box is doing. Please, Christina. I did it even the harder way and got the right answer. Oh, the 2 plus 2 plus 2? Oh, no, I did. I oh, you will divide it. times 2 equals 180, and then I did another line where I added up. Yeah, like that. Yep, me that's too. That's what I did. <laughs> I did that in Excel, okay. too. That's the that's why I really quickly covered it up to make sure. Yeah, that's exactly that's exactly that's what you have to do. I mean, essentially, it's what you have to do. It's just that in Excel, you can do it in two steps. You can first do this times this, this times this, this times this, then sum it to get 589, and then divide it by the 184. Right. Now, FYI, just so you know, just so you know, when you're given a graph of a distribution like this. One way to approximate where the average is, because you guys are going to see these, especially you guys that are psych majors and social majors, you're going to constantly get curves thrown at you. Here's a skewed curve, or here's a bell curve. Here's a uniform distribution. Oh, these words will make sense eventually. No, not right now. <laughs> no, eventually it'll make sense. Here's a bimodal bi curve. Difficult. One way of figuring out roughly where the average is in a distribution is, pretend that graph is a plate of cookies. Okay, I get it. And figure out where you have to put your hand to do what? Now think the most. It's a plate of cookies, a tray of cookies that you're going to see. You're, you're, the, you're the server. Where are you going to put your hand mm -hmm. to hold it so it doesn't tip to one side or the other? Yeah. Think of it as a balance. That's so weird. I do that think of it as a balance. And jury, the reason I said not the most, sometimes it is the most, but it's not always the most. It's not the most here. If you put your finger right here, there's too much weight yeah. on that side, which would drop it down. So what you want to have to do, since we just calculated the average was three, your finger would have to actually be here to balance it. All this stuff here balances this big, huge spike here. Pretty cool, actually. Now, here is also an interesting consequence. Well, somebody, a couple of you yesterday said the word outlier. I was very fascinated by that. Yeah. Oh, it was because we were doing things like flipping coins and getting like eight heads in a row. It's an outlier. I love that you were using that term. <laughs> Outliers have a very distinct effect on averages. For example, suppose, and this could totally happen, that somebody took 16 flips to, to see all the sides. So they went like tails, 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 And then finally got a head. Well, that's going to put a cookie way down there on the tray, right? Right. 
What's that going to do to your average? Probably a little tiny bit, but what's it going to do to that average? It's a tipping point. <laughs> it's it's going to tip now if you put that cookie over there. Yeah. So where are you going to have to move your hand? That way. A little bit that way. A little bit, a little bit towards the cookie, right? Think about it, right? I if you, can't speak yet. That's <laughs> okay. Keep drinking just one. It'll, it'll help. So if you're balancing that tray, I wish I had bought a tray. I didn't bring a tray. Oh, Damn it. A binder, notebook, binder. What if I'm good enough to do that? Calculator. I got a binder. Is I got a binder. The fulcrum. Yes, it, it's the fulcrum or the pivot point. Yeah. I can't do it with. Yeah, let's do it like this. So if you then make the tray, essentially, if you add a cookie down here, you're making the tray longer. I can't do this with a damn tray. But you, you, you're going to put a weight down here. You're going to have to either do one of two things. Put more weight on this side. But that's not what an outlier is. An outlier doesn't say you could add another one. So in order to compensate for that, you have to move the fulcrum closer to the outlier. This is why when you deal with outliers in the data sets, in your lives, you've got to realize the effect they have on averages. The average chases outliers. Now, I bring this up only because it happens all the time. It happens all the time. I was in a Writing 122 class recently, and I read an article that a college student had written about energy drinks and caffeine levels of energy drinks. And they were talking about how energy drinks need to be labeled because they have so much caffeine and the caffeine is extraordinarily unhealthy. And they gave an example of this one called like mega something or other that had like 5,000 milligrams of caffeine in a 12 ounce bottle. And something else had like 6,000 milligrams of caffeine in an 8 ounce bottle. I'm like, holy crap. So the implication was they got to label these things because obviously this is a problem. And I said, wait a minute, time out. Nobody said it's a problem. I wouldn't drink those two. But I went back and actually got a data set of 700 different energy drinks and their caffeine levels. And as it turns out, the kid quoted the two highest caffeine level ones mm -hmm. and ignored all the other ones. Would you believe this? You don't have to. I can give you the data to prove it. <laughs> More than 75% of the data of the uh, caffeine of the energy drinks on the market. <laughs> have less caffeine than a cup of coffee. Yeah. True, but it has all the other crap in it. Ah, but his point was about the caffeine. He didn't mention the taurine and the sugar and everything else. He didn't mention that. He said caffeine. More than three quarters of the energy drinks on the market have fewer milligrams of caffeine per fluid ounce than a cup of coffee. So his point is entirely based on outliers. You got to watch that. People will try this all the time. How many of you always are, oh, God. Winter in Ben 20 years ago was so much better. We had snow all the time. You've heard that, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's not true. No, you just it's not snow. true. You remember the outline. You remember when you go to the McMenamin's pub, there's a picture of the nuns shoveling out the eight foot snow drift. That will stick in your mind. What will not stick in your mind is the other 180 days that year where there was no snow. Last year, what day do you remember last year, oh, last winter? Week. The one day it snowed three feet yeah. and it stuck around for a week. Yeah. 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 You don't remember that the whole winter was low on average. You remember the one day it wasn't. That's the problem with outliers. We remember them. That's weird. Isn't it? Last winter was crazy. It was crazy dry. It was crazy dry. It was, it was depressing for skiers. That week was insane, but that week was an outlier. That's what we have to remember. Outliers do have that effect. And because we're human, we remember them because they're unusual. It's just like remembering a good time and not remembering all the crappy things that happened. Yes. Yeah. Although some people do just the opposite. opposite. Yeah. yeah. I mean, how often do you hear about a plane crashing in the news? Every time it happens. Right. How often do you read the news? Oh, guess what? TWA Flight 17 landed just fine. Yeah. <laughs> Never. Because for every plane that crashes, 8.2 million don't crash. Right. But you hear about the one that does. So as humans, we are drawn to these outliers. As statisticians, you got to make sure this guy isn't. Does that make sense? Yes. Now, I'm not calling these outliers. I'm saying these are pretty much predictable events if you flip a coin enough times. It changes the average. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It does change the average. But the thing, it, can we come back to that, Christina? Because yes. what you just said is wonderful. And then the question comes in, and we answer this in 243 and 244. When is something an outlier? And should we throw it away or not? Hmm. If it is an outlier, let's come. I want to revisit that in 243 and 244 because it's a great I'll question. I'll be there. It's a fantastic. Good. I'll be there too. <laughs> it's a great question. What to do with these goofy outliers? What should we do with them? There's lots of things you should do with them. You should look at them and see why they're outliers. That's one thing. We'll talk about my son riding his bike. That's a great example of that. Sometimes you should throw them away. If somebody, for example, was flipping a coin and said, man, I just can't get tails, I can't get tails, and I go and look at it, it's got two tail, or it's got two heads on it. Well, then we have to take that coin away and throw that data point out because it was faulty sampling. Those are two kinds of error, legitimate and non-legitimate or non-sampling error. 
So, and this is all with 243 and 244. 244 especially That's, is based around the measurement of air. Yes. Yeah. So it's almost like in a psychological experiment, exactly. it would be like the control. It's exactly. Yeah. How wide is the control? Anything outside of those wings becomes yeah. an outlier. Yeah. Now, why is it there? Is it there because of the experimental effect? Or is it there because of random chance? And that's what you end up, that's all 244 talks cool. about essentially for 10 weeks. I might like it. Oh, it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, or you're implicated. You seem to have it twice. I, there's, yeah, this is the beginning of a big, big. But it's cool to take math and know that I'm going to use it. Oh, God. It's, it's, it's so funny. Class, I feel that me way. too. Algebra. Me too. I've never felt Christina, that way. Christina, yeah. for the past 10 years, it, ever since I stopped teaching algebra-based math and started teaching statistical-based yeah. math, nobody ever asked me what the point is anymore. Because you never have a chance. Yeah. I'm constantly yeah. hitting you with points. No one tells you, I'm never going to use this. Yeah, I, I, I say, you're full of crap because you used it when you got here, you're going to use it in two hours. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's one of those things. Like, it's, it's, it's life math. I love yeah. it. If I you walk up into the math department right now, and I would recommend it because it's uphill and it's cold, <laughs> but if you were to walk through Grandview right now, there are two huge blackboards. And every Friday we have, a, we have a teaching meeting and we design new ideas for courses. Those two boards right now are filled with prerequisite courses for 105 and 243. We're going to oh develop new prereq courses so that students won't have to go through 60, 65, oh 95. Thank you. That's awesome. That's awesome. That is awesome. Well, I'm oh sorry. I didn't just too bad. But it's a statewide move. That makes We're just kind of leading the charge on it. We want yeah. we realize that this map so is valuable better. for so many of you. Yeah. It's not valuable for engineers. I shouldn't say that. It's not as valuable just yeah. for engineers. They need right. calculus. But, they that, but we're not all engineers. I They're know you're not. That's my point is that most students here aren't engineers and physicists and astronomers. Yeah, yeah. Right. We, need to, we need to be able to look at a news article and, and realize it's full ways. of crap or not. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what we're in the middle of. Yeah. I have so. friends who are engineers and like this is one of them that helped me with stuff and he was like mind boggled. Was it the was it the quadratic one? Yeah. You guys did calculus in here. I, did, I never told you that, did I? Yeah. I, I you did. You did calculus. And when you calculated my average speed, my instantaneous speed going down that hill, yeah. you were doing it was. calculus. Oh. <laughs> Go ahead and pat yourself on the back. Yeah. Pretty don't badass. Say it. Just, don't just, just don't say it. You did calculus. Mm. Okay, I'll stop talking just about it. Just tell us after the fact. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you, just, you did calculus like three weeks ago. Yeah. And